Okay, so that, how many factors do you have? Who has one factor? Who has more than five factors? You do? More than four factors? More than three factors? More than two? So you need to put up your hand. So then, how many factors do you have? Just one hands up. Two, three, four, five, more than five. You guys didn't put up your hand. Zero. Hmm? You don't think you can't think of one thing which affects the exchange rate? Hmm? So tell me some things. What affects the exchange rate? Inflation. Inflation. Is that in the short term, the medium term, or the long term? Inflation is higher in the US, so it means in the next six months, the US currency will get weaker. Or over the next five years. Is it long term or short term? Long term. Hmm? So the Japanese currency got very weak over the last couple of years. Does that mean Japan has high inflation? No. No, so is inflation a short term or a long term factor? Inflation is a long term factor. Right? Medium to long term factor. Okay, another one? Government policy. Government policy? What, what do you mean by government policy? Uh, about <coughs> like pack and Changing the regime, instability in the company, in the country, political instability, you say. What about you? What government policy? Government makes a lot of policies. The government policy about fishing? Which government policy affects the exchange rate? Uh, exchange rate policy. Like China, uh, Hong Kong? Ah, yes. But we're talking about the freely floating exchange rate, right? In the managed exchange rate, just the government is controlling, right? So you're right, in the managed exchange rate, the central bank or the government is controlling, right? But in another country, the government policy also impacts the exchange rate. How does that impact the exchange rate? That's central bank policy, like inflation. So where will we put QE here? Factors which exchange affect exchange rate. Short to medium term, let's say medium term, QE, right? QE is increasing the money supply, which can lead to inflation in the long term. Okay. Okay, QE, so called printing money. So anything else? So well I want to say with government policy. You could have, so we're, we're talking about fiscal policy, spending, government spending and uh, collecting the taxes, right? So if the government is, has an expansionary fiscal policy, it's spending a lot of money, what's happening to the money supply, going up or going down? Government is spending a lot of money, getting a lot of loans, borrowing a lot and spending the money. Is there more money in the economy or less money? Hmm? So here's the economy. Here's the government. How does the government put money into the economy? Does it get a helicopter? Then just drops the money, a big bag of money, push out the helicopter, no. Obama, no. pick the money and on the shopping center. No. All the people grab the money. Hmm? How does the government put the money into the economy? Who do they give the money to? Hmm? Companies sometimes, if they're bailing out the companies. So we could have a company bailout like GE or GM, right? Or AIG, right? More Social, hmm? Social infrastructure. Social infrastructure, roads, right? How else does the money put money, government put money into the economy? They build roads, what else? <coughs> mm -hmm. 
hospitals. So if the government is spending more money, increasing the salary of the people building the roads, increasing the salary and hiring more people in the hospitals, what's happening to the money supply in the economy? More money or less money in the economy? More money. Is that increasing or decreasing the money supply? Increasing. So we have to think about fiscal policy. Okay? This is called fiscal policy. You said government policy. Government policy could be anything. Okay? So more specifically, you say fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is talking about the government spending and collecting taxes. Okay? So fiscal policy affects the exchange rate because it's increasing the money supply. Okay? So is that short term, medium term, or long term? Medium term. Medium term, right? QE and fiscal policy. So QE, monetary policy. The interest rate. We didn't talk about it yet, right? Monetary policy, QE, and interest rates. Fiscal policy. Okay, what else affects the exchange rate? So you talked about the government or economic crisis. Econo a crisis, what kind of effect is that going to have on the exchange rate? Short term, medium term, or long term? Short term. Okay, it could be short to medium term, right? Big countries usually recover after the crisis, so short to medium term. <coughs> Any other factor which affects the exchange rate? Carry trade. Carry trade. Trade. Carry trade. How is the carry trade going to affect? Short term, medium term, or long term? Short term. Short term, right? Carry trade or speculators. Speculators, buying and selling currencies to make profit, short term. <clears throat> okay, that's why you have to invest money for a longer time. These people, they try to influence the market too, because you have some big speculators with a lot of money, like George Soros. Okay? They will all buy a currency or sell a currency together. So the currency price can change a lot in the short term, opposite to what these things are saying. Okay? Can you understand that idea? We have Japan has low inflation or so on, right? So we can have this kind of thing in the long term. A country which has an easy fiscal policy, increasing their money supply, doing QE, we expect the currency will get weaker in the long term. Okay? But the speculators could do the opposite bet in the short term. Okay? So the currency can move in the opposite direction in the short term because you have so many people making this bet. Okay? So that's why you guys are doing the foreign exchange trading. If you make policy based on this, maybe you'll be right, but it will take one year for your investment to come back. Okay? Because why? You have so many, so much carry trade and speculators in the short term. That's why for the short term you're following the trend. Okay? Basically you're following these guys copying these guys, right? So, anything else which affects the exchange rate? <clears throat> so this document is about reading for week five, it's in the readings, it's called exchange rate models. So, you can read this document, but uh, the main part is this part here, right? Exchange rate determination graph in the short, medium, and long run. So here, here are the things which affect the exchange rate. In the short term, it's all speculators. Trend following. That's what you're doing, following the trend. Okay? Investor positioning, investor sentiment. So people start to panic. Right? How do investors feel? Some big investor makes a position in the currency, like short or long the currency. Is the world in a risk-on or risk-off situation? If the world is risk-on, people want risk, or the world is risk off. It's different. If the world is risk off, what currency are people going to invest in? Risk off means people are risk off. They, the world is unstable, they're not sure about the future, they don't want to take risk, they're risk off. What currency are they going to invest in? US dollar. US dollar, what else? Swiss franc, what else? Right? So maybe 
to Europe, so on, right? The plan is zero crisis in Europe. Um, again, market positioning in the options market. So we can see that for six months, we're not talking about any of these things. Okay? You guys are just trading for less than six months. So you're not really thinking about these things in your trading strategy. You can if you want, but what that's, this is, these are bigger influences on the market in the short term. And the many new investors can lose money, for example, in the stock market, because sometimes these guys, on purpose, traders like volatility. If the market looks like this, traders can't make any money, right? If it's cleared, like in the Chinese currency, right? Traders can't make any money, just 5% a year. I think it's just slowly getting stronger or weaker. But traders like this kind of situation, okay? If I'm a trader, I could buy low, sell high, buy, sell high, buy low. Right? So the traders try to manipulate this kind of situation in the market where the price goes up and down. So the problem is that some short young, new investor, their stock price suddenly goes down or the market is suddenly going down. What do they do? They start to panic, right? And they sell. Is the trader happy? Who's buying when they're selling? Who's buying when you're selling here? Trader buys, right? The trader tries to force you to sell by making some run on the market. Then you sell, then the trader buys. Okay, the stock price goes back up again. You say, oh no, bad luck. My luck is really bad in trading. I, I just sold the stock and the price went up again, right? So then you say, oh, price is going up a lot. I think I'll buy the stock again, <laughs> right? So who sells you the stock? Trader sells you the stock, right? Then, oh no, not again, bad luck, the stock market is going down. I lost all my money. I have to sell the stock. Who, who buys your stock? Do you understand? So in the short term in the market, you have a lot of influence from the traders. So if you wait this out, if you wait for six months, you wait for one year, for two years, in the end the price is going to go up, up like this way. Right? Well, kind of like this, in, the, in that kind of way. So that's why a lot of, uh, you need to get advice, professional advice w when you're trade investing, right? And it's not easy to make money in the market by trading in the short term, because it's very hard to explain what's going to happen next. So a lot of funds have a long-term trading strategy. They invest for two years, for three years, on these kind of ideas on this kind of thing, right? So, we can see, this is what we're understanding by doing the foreign exchange trading. We're understanding that it's not easy in the short term to predict what's going to happen with the currency, okay? It might be a little bit easier in the medium and much easier in the long term. So the next thing we look at is the medium term factor. We have the interest rate. The current account trends, we didn't mention, trade, right? Trade affects the exchange rate. We explained before we read the article in The Economist. So if you have a current account deficit, what do we expect to happen to your currency? You have a deficit. You're importing more than you're exporting. What do we need to happen to make a balance? Hmm? What needs to happen to your currency? Now your US, you're the US. Imports are high. Okay? Exports low. What we want what do we want to do to make a balance? For in the US. Increase exports or decrease exports? Decrease. So to make a balance, we need to increase exports and de decrease imports, right? So what needs to happen to the exchange rate? For that to happen, get weaker or get stronger? Is a stronger currency going to help our exports? Weaker. So if we have a deficit like the U.S., what do we want? To, what should happen over the medium term? Currency should get stronger or weaker? Weaker. Weaker. Okay. Why? Why should it get weaker over the medium term? Do 
to make a balance, right? So we, currently the US has low exports, so we want to make the exports higher. I see a lot of blank faces. We already discussed about this three or four weeks ago, so you should know this relationship, okay? About the current account. So just try to explain to your partner about the relationship between the current account and the exchange rate. So explain to your partner. What is the relationship? Current account is here in the medium term. So if we have a current account surplus, it means we have more exports and less imports. Right? If we have a deficit, we have more imports and less exports. So if we're a deficit country or if we're a surplus country, what do we expect to happen to our exchange rate in the medium term? So explain to your partner. Okay, so Yang, Yong, Sok, can you explain what's the relationship between the current cat and the exchange rate? Somehow, yes. uh, Yi Chang He, yes. can you explain? Uh, I explain Korean situation. Yes. In Korea, many exports and lower imports. What's that called? Uh, surplus or deficit? Surplus. So Korea has a surplus, right? Yes. A surplus, so many dollars in, into the Korea. Yes. So Korea one is the stronger by US dollar. US dollar. Mm -hmm. So, uh, example, the one dollar is made thousand one. Mm -hmm. Thousand one. Yes. And the Korea one is stronger mean mm -hmm. one dollar mean nine hundred one. Yes. That means the uh, Korea one is stronger is export. Uh, price power is the low, so we don't. Export, export, we don't export many things, mm -hmm. and our Korea one is stronger. So Korea people want the foreign product. Yes. So uh, the power strong. Korea one power stronger. The Korean people buy the many foreign import uh, foreign products. Okay. So it's like a balance, right? Yes. It's like. If the Korean currency gets stronger, then you should buy more American products and buy less Korean products. Yes. Okay? So it's like balancing things out. So if you're so, you can just remember the surplus country, it should get stronger. The currency should get stronger over the medium term. Okay, deficit country should get currency should get weaker, right? But current account is just one factor. It's not the only factor that affects the exchange rate. Okay, there are other factors. The interest rate. We're going to, uh, capital flows. Capital flows is is investing in the country, money going into the country, like into the, into the stock market. Okay. Uh, monetary policy. We talked about here. We mentioned fiscal policy. We talked about. 
Economic growth. Do you understand economic growth? Yes. Every country wants to grow. Okay? So, if we are a growing country, we should attract more investment and more money into our economy. Okay? So, we can, our currency can get stronger. We are growing very well. So, we can see China has a high economic growth, right? Currency was getting a bit stronger. So, uh, then the long term, we're going to focus on the medium term in the long, and, the lo and just purchasing power parity from the long term. But we also have productivity, savings investment balance. Are the, are the people in our country savers or spenders? Okay. Do you understand productivity? Is our country productive? Are we increasing our productivity? So let me give you a very clear example of that. In Europe, we have Germany and uh, Greece. So which country increased, increased their productivity more in the last 10 years? Germany. Yes, so here we have Germany. What is productivity? How do we calculate productivity? We use uh, GD, goods and services produced, right? And then we look at how much time and money did it take, okay? So productivity is basically how much time and money does it take to produce something, goods and services, okay? So we can measure this by the salary of the workers, the hours worked, okay? How much GDP is the country producing? So Germany is producing more GDP, right? Yes. With same salary and low time, low hours of work. Okay. Greece, it's not increasing its GDP, right? Or maybe it's increasing its GDP not as much as Germany. Okay. But its salary, salary of the workers, is going up a lot. Main difference. Okay? And the workers are working more time. So Greece is not as productive as Germany. Now, what in the old days, nowadays we have the euro currency, so there's no escape for Greece. Okay? The only choice they have is this: reduce the salaries. Okay? That kind of thing, right? But in the old days, Greece had the drachma, and Germany had the Deutschmark. So what used to happen is every few years, Greece's currency, what do you think, would get stronger or get weaker? Weaker. Weaker, right? Because Greece has a weaker currency, we are not as productive as Germany over the long term, right? So we, our currency keeps getting weaker and weaker and weaker. That allows our products to compete with the German products. Because German products, the salary was lower, the time was less. Cost less money to produce the products, right? Yes. So Germany can sell their product more cheaply. This is the situation in Europe at the moment. That's a Greece problem, productivity problem, right? Germany can sell their products cheaply because they are more productive, getting more productive. Greece have to pay the higher salary they're not producing as much goods, okay? If you think about just a factory producing shoes, German factory pay, produce 100 pairs of shoes a day, right? With just one worker and low, low salary. Greece produce just 100 pairs of shoes a day with five workers and high salaries. So Greece has to sell their shoes more expensive. Which shoes are you going to buy? You're going to buy the German shoes, okay? Yes. So in order to help their shoes, they would make their currency weaker. So now maybe you buy the Greek shoes because it got a lot cheaper. Because Greece's currency was a lot weaker than Germany's currency. So Italy, Greece, Spain and Portugal, constantly Germany was pre performing better. Or Northern Europe countries, not just Germany, Netherlands, Ireland, Denmark, so on, right? So the Southern European countries would react by making their currency weaker. Can you understand that idea? Yes. So productivity can affect the exchange rate. And this is the, one of the solutions for Greece. 
you, Greece, you need to get more productive if you want to stay in the same currency, okay, as uh, uh, Germany. Do you think Greece can get more productive and stay in the same currency as Germany? No. Do you think they're better off to leave the euro and just make their currency weaker every time? Hmm? Okay, but in, in Euro state, the place lift the, the Euro, the German and all of the Euro is danger. Yes, maybe Spain or Portugal might also, Italy might decide to leave, right? So it could cause a knock on effect. So, anyway, those are the factors. We're not going to just, I briefly discussed the factors now, but we're going to focus on just some number of factors in detail, okay? We're not going to focus on this, it's just the short term, it's very hard to predict, okay? Do you want to be a trader after you graduate? No. It's quite, that's why trading is quite a stressful job. Some people give up after 10 years who work on Wall Street, they just leave after 10 years because they get very stressed, right? Because it's very hard to predict what's going to happen. Really they're just following trends, right? trying to guess what are the other investors doing, that kind of thing. But people work in trading, so you could get a job in trading, in investment banks or for stock, as a stockbroker, right? But it's a hard job, trading. It's not easy. Certain, certain people who are good at trading, they're not always the smartest people in school, right? They have different kind of intelligence, practical intelligence. Practical intelligence, right? The kind of practical intelligence just copy the other person, right? Then we can make money, right? That kind of, do you understand practical intelligence? Can help to make a good trader. So, then we're going to focus on the real interest rate, the interest rate, we're going to discuss about the interest rate, monetary policy, and we're going to discuss about purchasing power parity as the main factors which affect most important factors which affect the exchange rate in the medium and long term. Okay. So, just briefly to have a look here. They asked the foreign exchange dealers, what do you think? What's your perception of the most important factor in exchange rate movements? On a medium, on a daily basis, do you understand bandwagon? Bandwagon means following other people. In Germany, in the 18th century, a band would go around on a wagon. Do you understand wagon? Yes. There was a horse in the wagon. And people were, were wanted to have fun, so they jump on the wagon and drink a beer. Follow the band. Okay? So we say bandwagon effect in English means everybody's on the wagon. Let's go and join them and have fun. Right? So bandwagon effect is high overreaction to news. Volkswagen had a crisis recently. Good time to buy Volkswagen stocks, right? Probably the people overreacted. It wasn't as bad as people reacted. So if you buy the stock price now, probably in two years, Volkswagen price will be back up again. Yes. 30 or 40 percent, right? Yes. Almost what it fell. Are you going to buy Volkswagen stock? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> then blame me after two years. <laughs> <laughs> Volkswagen is bankrupt. <laughs> Company is finished. Hmm? So another example of that in the past was Shell. The BP had the oil disaster. People tend to overreact to the bad news. Then you can buy the stocks. And at that time, the low price. Uh, specul speculators. Economic fundamentals just one percent. Technical trading other. Right. So if you're doing day trading. We're not thinking about the medium term basis. Right? In the medium up to six months, economic fundamentals starts to come in here, but we're still looking a lot at speculators. But after six months, economic fundamentals is the main influence on the market. Okay? Speculators is still there, 11% on technical trading, 3% on speculators, right? So about, even after six months, the speculators still have an effect on the market. But mainly over six months in the forex market, these kind of things affect the exchange rate. Okay, so 
Here we can say the trend is your friend. This is the short term, right? So this is the US, yen and the US dollar from 1980 to 2005. Okay, so the yen has been getting what? Stronger or weaker against the dollar? It was 240 yen, it was $1 in, nine, in 1980. Nowadays it's 120 yen, is $1. Is the yen getting stronger or weaker? The yen is getting stronger, dollar is getting weaker, right? Uh, <coughs> what we would expect to happen on a couple of things, the current account, for example, the current account, Japan has a surplus, right? The US has a deficit. Also inflation, Japan has very low inflation. We expect the currency to get stronger. Okay? So we can see that anyway some people can just follow the trend over the long term. Uh, here is the carry trade, we discussed the carry trade. Here is profits from the carry trade. So Sometimes people are making a profit from the short-term carry trade, getting a loan in the low interest rate currency and investing in the high interest rate currency, right? But sometimes they're making a loss. Here the carry traders make big loss. So they're not always making a profit, but we can see more often than making a loss, they're making profit using the carry trade, right? But you can make a loss in the carry trade too. This is cumulative profits. Here they were making losses. Here they're making, overall they're making profit now. So here, just we're going to look at some graphs. Inflation has a very strong, we're going to talk about it in more detail. Inflation has a very strong correlation over the long term. Here we can see each of these dots is a country, okay? And it shows their inflation. So this is a country whose inflation is uh, 9%, okay? Here is a country whose inflation is minus 15%. And then this is the exchange rate change. So what we can see here that for extremes, like uh, if we have high inflation here, we expect that the exchange rate should get weaker, right? But we can't see any big relationship here. The dots are just, here we can have, here's the exchange rate change. So on this side, uh, we have a stronger exchange rate, and on this side, a weaker exchange rate. But there's no real, it should be like this if there was a relationship, okay? Graph should be like this, we see in the other ones. Okay? It should be the case that, like, I have uh, low inflation, my my, uh, like in this case, right, should be the case that I have low inflation, my uh, currency should get stronger, I have high inflation, it should get weaker. But in one year, we can't see any difference. In one year, we start to see a difference. But over 24 years, we can see a very strong relationship between inflation and the exchange rate. So here is a country who had... Uh, no, minus 50s inflation compared to the average, so low inflation. And this is, their exchange rate is getting stronger. And then the currency who has a high inflation, say 200% over 20 years, that's going to be here, right? Much weaker currency. So we can draw, we can draw a line here. We can see the relationship, okay? This, these countries is low inflation, strong currency, like Japan, okay? These countries is like Russia, high inflation, weaker currency over the longer term. So inflation over the long term has a strong, very strong relationship. Over one year, inflation, a little bit of a relationship, but still not, not, not as strong as over the long term. We can see there's some outliers here and here and here. Okay. Do you have any questions about this this graph? So we'll we'll talk about that. Just I'm I'm going through this uh, document, and here we have uh, 
Do you understand purchasing power parity? What is purchasing power parity? The people buying the product. So same, same concept. So, yes, so what? So, for example, give me a product, rice. I buy one kilogram of rice in, in Korea. Right? How much does it cost? Hmm? Four kilograms is twenty thousand, right? Uh. <laughs> I know the price of rice better, right? I buy rice. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife sends me to buy rice, so I know the price of rice. How much is uh, one kilogram of rice in Japan? Japan? Okay. So, maybe. Let's say for easiness sake that it's uh, 100 yen. 500 yen. Okay. So according to this, what should the exchange rate be between Korea and Japan? One, one, one. This should be one, and this should be ten. Okay, that's ten to one ratio. Okay, so the exchange rate should be, say, it's easier to think about with one thousand one should be equals to one hundred yen. Okay. That is the PPP exchange rate. But if we look at this graph, we can see that Korea's currency is undervalued against over the long term against the Japanese currency. Okay. So this is uh, one, number of one per 100 yen. So here we got 100 yen. So the first thing we can see is that nowadays. It's about here, right? About 1,000. Uh, this blue line is the actual exchange rate, right? So it, at that time, in 2009, it was actually 1,280 Korean won for 100 yen. 100 yen is about a dollar, okay? But this is the purchasing power parity exchange rate, okay? This is the exchange rate if we take all of the goods Korea and compare them to Japan, what would the exchange rate be? So if I buy rice and bicycles and shoes and pay my rent and do everything, which country is more expensive, Korea or Japan? If you look at this graph. Japan, right? This is the exchange rate according to PPP. The exchange rate should be just Let's say that it should be this, right? But this is the exchange rate in the market. Let's say it's 1,400. If the market, if we use the market exchange rate, 1,401 equals 100 yen. Okay. Then how much will rice cost in Japan? We need to do some maths. Let's make it a little bit easier. 1,501 equals 100 yen. So then, this is, goes into that three times. It's going to be, uh, anyway, 100 yen is going to be 6,500 won, right? It's like 500 yen. 7,500 won, 500 yen. So, 5,000, how much is 5,000 won? Let's say it's 400 yen, just to say I was doing the maths, right? So this is the real life, uh, or the real exchange rate. Oh. What happens is, when I change my Korean money to the Japanese currency, this is the exchange rate, this is the price of rice in the two countries, right? Yes. But when I change my Korean won to Japanese currency, I only get 400 yen. Yes. So can I afford to buy the rice in Japan? No. No, so where is the rice more expensive? Japan. Japan, so Japan is more expensive than Korea. 
And Japan has been more expensive than Korea for the last, since 1980. Okay? So you can tell your friends if they're going on holidays to Japan. Korea is cheaper. Rice is cheaper. Hotels are cheaper. Restaurants are cheaper. Okay? Did you know that? Has anybody been to Japan? Has anybody been to Japan here? Yes? What, were things expensive in Japan? No, quite expensive. More expensive than Korea? Some products are two times higher. So products is twice as expensive as Korea? Okay. So, that's <coughs> purchasing power parity. This is what the exchange rate should be. It should be this. But it's not. It's this. Okay? This is the exchange rate in the market. So I change my money, I'm just, I have to pay 1,500 won to get 100 yen. So it's not good for Korean people going on holidays to Japan, but a little bit like Greece and Germany. Right? It's going to help the Korean economy. Which economy do you think was more productive over the last 20 years? Japan or Korea? Uh, Japan. Russian students, very brave. <laughs> <laughs> Korean students, well, Russian students say Japan. <laughs> what do you think? Hmm? Especially if you think about during the 80s. Hmm? Which country was more productive during the 80s? Japan, right? So, Korea has an undervalued currency against Japan. Why? Korea wants to help its exports. Okay? Maybe it thinks I can't compete with Japan directly. A little bit like Greece and Germany, right? Yes. Maybe nowadays it's getting more uh, uh, closer, right? But it's still undervalued against the Japanese currency. So it helps Korean companies who are exporting to have a, an undervalued exchange rate. But what, we're, what we can learn from this graph is that we can't use, you know, we can't say that these two lines are going to get together. We know that to get a balance, they should move together to be balanced, right? To have the same price. But we have to understand that Korea wants to keep its currency a little bit weaker compared to the Japanese currency. So that might not happen, even over the long term. These two lines might not get closer together. Okay? One currency could always be slightly undervalued against another currency. But the thing that we can see is that this is basically showing the relationship of inflation. Because here, uh, which country has higher inflation, Korea or Japan? Which country has higher inflation? Korea has higher inflation than Japan. We can see that from this graph, right? So what's happening in here? is that the price of rice is changing in Korea because of inflation. So the price of rice in Korea goes up to 6,000 won. Okay? Then this is going to change. This exchange rate is going to change. Do you understand? If inflation is higher in Korea, then this, this purchasing power parity exchange rate will change too. Okay? So this changes over time. The market, the market rate follows more or less, right? So the market rate is following the, the PPP rate, but not really, sometimes getting further away, sometimes getting closer, but following that trend. So do you have any question about this graph? More inflation means purchase power is down. Yes, your purchasing power is going down. So in, in which would you have wanted to have in the bank? Korean one or, or, or let's say you made a hole in the ground and you put all your money in the ground so you're not getting any interest. Some people do that, right? They bur bury their money under the ground. They don't trust banks. <laughs> right? Are you going to do that? No. Put your cash under the ground? No. This would suggest that you shouldn't because the price of things is getting more expensive, right? In Russia, you're not going to bury your cash, right? It's not going to be worth a loss after 20 years. Okay? So, we can see that... Which would you prefer to have? Yen or... Uh, 
cream one. Yeah, yeah right? So create you create uh, currency has lost its purchasing power. Why? Because of inflation in Korea is higher than Japan. Inflation in Korea is higher than Japan. Rice is constantly more expensive in Korea than Japan. Korean people are losing their purchasing power. Okay, and gradually this exchange rate is changing. Okay, from it's st it started off here, 280 won for 100 yen. Nowadays, 1,280 won is uh, 100 yen. <coughs> so it would be better to keep the 100 yen than the Korean one. Okay, under the ground. So, any more questions? So from this graph and this graph, we can see that inflation has a very strong influence over the exchange rate over the long term. Okay. So then let's take a break now for 10 minutes.